Through the Australian Government Reef Trust funding, reef catchments have undertaken streambank and gully remediation works across key sites in Murray Creek, St Helens Creek and the O'Connell River. There were four main remediation methods used. These include engineered works in the form of pile fields, insulation of rock groins and large woody debris structures, stream bank revegetation to reinstate an effective riparian zone, weed control to remove exotic species and riparian fencing for stock exclusion. Many sites had a combination of these activities and all activities are supported by an education package aimed at improving landholders' knowledge and in turn the management of their streams. So the Reef Trust 4 project being rolled out across the Mackay Sunday district, um, the work we do, we're looking to stop fine sediment entering the Great Barrier Reef Lagoon. We're also hoping to take people and our community on a journey of practice change um, and stewardship. So we want our land managers in the region to appreciate the role and function that riparian zones and our creek systems play in the community um, and appreciate those ecological services they have. Not every site that you see needs rock or pile fields or an engineered approach. Sometimes we can go there, we can install a riparian fence, we can just plant a whole area to trees um, and that performs a function in the landscape that stops these banks eroding etc. And then we move on to the hard faced engineering solutions. Um, what determines that is site specific basically, it's a horses of courses for approach, um, you can't go everywhere and you can't do this. One simply you wouldn't be able to afford to um, and two it's not necessary. My name's Peter Beretta, I'm the proprietor of this property. We are on Murray Creek. This bank here was a straight ledge. I was having problems with um, erosion. It was starting yeah. to eat away of the cane paddock. They asked me if they could revegetate it and I said, go for it. Reef catchment came along and I said, look, if you help us with, these, with the river, we can help you with other things, like help me out with my fencing along the rivers. That way I can keep the, the cattle out of the creeks and out, out of the trees. I think it's 100% benefit, it's all benefit, it's gotta be. You're, 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 um, you're saving your soil, okay? So you're getting less soil going, getting washed out. Um, as, a farmer, as a farmer, I'm saving my paddocks, so I'm not losing land. These sites come on board because there was a, a huge amount of landholder engagement right from the beginning of the project. So engaging with, with landholders, a community consultation process along Murray Creek, um, you know, especially when they're looking at such a large reach scale project, they want to ensure that they've got as many landholders as possible uh, with all properties neighbouring one another along the stream bank mm. um, to bring them together and, and get them all on the same page and working towards the same goal. One of the good benefits that have come out of the project is the number of local suppliers that we've been able to engage with. So that's right from people that supply the tube stock, our guys that are doing the on-ground works, um, installing engineered sites, delivering rock. All our rock comes from the local quarry. We link in with Reef Catchment really early on when there's a hint that there's some project funding. And we find that with trees and growing vegetation, we have to be on board very early. Um, and the main reason for that is the picking the right species and also so we have enough seed supply. Well, it's actually putting back what humans have taken out. So the biggest thing is to work with nature. So if the soil and the weather and the water and the site has, has a particular regional ecosystem, you just work with what actually grows well there. In the lower estuarine reaches of Murray Creek, successful revegetation sites are MC1 and MC2. Across these sites, 4,260 native tube stock have been planted over 0.72 hectares. Together, MC1 and MC2 have been calculated to save 266 tonnes of sediment being delivered to the coast each year. These trees that we've planted, well here, we've got the coastal hibiscus here, um, and they're native to the area, and they, they're really good. They interlock with each other. They have roots go about five metres, go around and just interlock and hold the bank together. These here, the ones we planted about a year and a half ago, if you walk over this way, here's a site we just planted out yesterday. Um, we've changed trees up a bit. We've gone more eucalypts back up this way, away from the bank. 
but we've still got the coastal hibiscus down there to interlock all that together. It'll tie that section into the, the original section and tie it all together. So if there's erosion, well, it's all, it's all going to get stopped. Further north in the O'Connell River, OC10 is an engineered and revegetation site that has installed pile fields, bank toe rock armouring and 6,000 native plants. The rock work and the hard engineered section of what we do, it's not different to these trees. It's providing a stable mechanism so that these guys can survive and thrive and what you see up there becomes here and then you've got nature doing the work for us. Um, on the O'Connell River since um, year 2000, I've been from the mouth uh, right to the top. I've seen a lot of damage being done. Seen a lot of cane farms that's been cut in half due to floods, uh, water rising, just washing everything out. A lot of people underestimate the power of this river. Oh yeah, there's fish in there. There's barra, there's bull sharks, there's everything in there. There, there is, a, this river is a very healthy river, so yeah, it's got to be protected. These projects are critical for not only employment in the area, they're critical for, for the, the aesthetics of the area, they're critical for our sustainability of the area. Um, they funding these projects obviously do monstrous amounts to not, well A, they protect a lot of cropping land, from um, uh, destabilised banks and protecting against sediment losses moving out into the ocean. Owning land is, is, is not just planting crops or else we do all that and we look after our soils and that, but there's so many other areas of the property that require so much time and effort that don't actually give a, a financial reward, but they're critical to our environment and the sustainability of this area moving forward. The, the reef trust money and projects are just absolutely critical for these smaller towns to be moving forward. We need them and more. We've definitely set the foundation exactly. for future reef trust funding, yeah. um, which is pretty exciting. We've got a number of different erosion sites that you know, are gonna be tested and put through their paces mm. um, that have been installed through Reef Trust 4. Uh, so you know, going forward, we'll have that knowledge base there and, and be able to work out what's going to work best in, in each particular situation. Across the Reef Trust 4 program, we've engaged 23 local businesses and supported more than 60 local jobs. We've worked with 33 local landholders across 37 different project sites within the O'Connell Basin. Within that, there's nine engineered erosion control sites installed. This includes five pile fields, one large woody debris structure and three rock groin sites. Riparian fencing has protected over 45 hectares of riparian area and there's been 20 off-stream watering points installed within grazing paddocks. Our target for the project was 7,500 tonnes of fine sediment saved from reaching the Great Barrier Reef Lagoon. Using the Reef Trust Stream Bank Erosion Control Assessment Tool, we're currently looking at a sediment saving of over 9,000 tonnes, so we've exceeded our target. The revegetation sites have covered an area of greater than 25 hectares and we've planted over 70,000 local native plants. That's a lot of plants. Yeah, that's <laughs> I think in terms of what inspires me, it's seeing those projects get delivered, um, seeing the actual on-ground change. Um, this site's been in operation since, you know, um, the end of last year and it's been a few short months and you've just watched, I've watched it flourish, you know. These, these trees were like uh, this big tube stock and now they're like standing as tall as me in some areas. So, you know, that change um, is just so meaningful to me. But I find we're working together and um, it, it, it's helping both of us, um, the environment and everyone. So if we can work together and all be happy, what, what more do you ask for, you know? And um, we're not losing anything, we're gaining, running gaining out of this project. Reef Trust as a whole, you get caught up in the doing. Like you come along and you do this and you go to the next site and you do that, you install a fence, you plant trees, etc. And sometimes it's easy to forget that we've got to take people on this journey with us. Numerous stakeholders have a connection to this land. So whether it's a cultural heritage connection or it's the landholder in the abutting you know, landscape and cane farm, we need them to be part of the solution going forward. Um, so it's a win-win for everyone really. And why wouldn't you want to work here? They're beautiful streams in a beautiful part of the world.